So, dear Nikita, uh, we war warmly welcome you in Riga uh, as a participant of the exhibition Reconstruction of uh, Friendship. So, uh, could you tell uh, me about your work, uh, about the background and, uh, and how, it, uh, how the idea came into being? This work is uh, called uh, Procedure Room. It uh, consists of a set of souvenir plates and uh, the posters where is the text of Ukrainian writer and human uh, rights watch activist Ekaterina Mishenka and, uh, and of mine. Uh, and uh, this work uh, uh, is about uh, police torture, tortures in uh, Ukrainian uh, militia. Uh, torture, which is a kind of open secret of Ukrainian society, about which people mostly know. But uh, this issue is not uh, anyhow in the center of our discussion in Ukrainian society. And uh, plenty of people were tortured. Uh, some people were tortured to death, but uh, no any uh, policeman, militiaire, who did it uh, was uh, really, really prosecuted because there is a strong system of corruption, of uh, inner uh, support of avoiding uh, responsibility. So uh, for having uh, this information for this work, I uh, worked with uh, human rights activists. They uh, provide me with an information. So uh, I uh, did uh, uh, drawings, uh, drawings which were printed on uh, plates, drawings uh, which uh, um, somehow use the manner of uh, drawings from Soviet medical books, like instruction drawings, drawings uh, of uh, certain medical procedures. In a popular medical encyclopedia of Soviet Union, I found uh, images, uh, drawings where uh, people who like treat an uh, some painful way or under some medical procedure which is painful they have very quiet like slightly smiling faces like we are in the hands of professional doctor knows better uh, what uh, what we need uh, even if we uh, feel pain uh, is for our own good and somehow uh, this um, like uh, feeling uh, it's uh, very, very much uh, about Ukrainian uh, society and its relation to torturers. Just uh, people uh, don't really protest and uh, somehow fear as a main instrument of uh, police of Ukrainian militia is considered something even uh, maybe good for society for the social health yes 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 so uh, really so many cases of uh, people are violently treated and uh, so little information in mass media uh, so uh, little reaction of authorities and uh, this re that reactions they are really very hypocritical there are a lot of lies, just uh, that as its victims, they all were like guilty themselves. Uh, they fallen uh, in the police station. They broke their heads like 50 times. Uh, and uh, after a few last cases, like the case of Igor Indil, who was killed, and uh, uh, of Oksana Makara, there were a protest campaigns and. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so um, this is a kind of open secret. Yeah, but I was just thinking that sort of with, the, with the, your work, with those plates and the posters, you sort of are making it very visible, uh, that thing that is mostly maybe invisible, as you say. And uh, what was the reaction, for example, when you exhibited them in Ukraine? Yeah, I uh, try to make it visible, but uh, art has uh, different instruments than uh, mass media and uh, then activism. 
Uh, so these works are about a reflection of how uh, this issue actually exists, how it works in society. But it's rather about trying to understand, not about trying to inform. Uh, art not always is uh, like good in uh, informing people. It's a bit a different sphere. But uh, this work uh, was exhibited. Uh, it was exhibited in Center for Visual Culture Research, which uh, in some time uh, was uh, just just censored and closed uh, in uh, Kiev Magill Academy by a person who now became Minister of Education, uh, Sergei Kvit. So, and uh, this it was exhibited as a part of the show called Court Experiment, which. Uh, was initiated like in support of uh, several Ukrainian activists who were under uh, administrative and criminal prosecution because of their social activism. Uh, and uh, then uh, this work was exhibited on uh, first Kyiv Biennial, and uh, it was exhibited several times internationally. But anyhow, it's not about information, it's about how you can reflect such a thing. So. Yeah, I think it's very much that uh, afterwards the viewer, uh, it's up to him or her uh, what can he, what he, he can actually do with this that he sees and that he thinks about this work when he sees it. As you say, it's about the reflection. Um, and uh, one more question that I would like to, do, uh, to ask you is that since we are in this uh, former KGB house uh, in Riga, then... Um, and we are also having a question like what to do with it next, so like what can be the fate of this uh, building. And just um, as uh, you come here and uh, maybe you can have some fresh ideas or, or just some reflections about it, uh, what to do future with this house. You can just share it. Yeah, I uh, just, uh, just arrived and uh, uh, now I'm trying to like to feel and to understand uh, this building but uh, really uh, this is about uh, memory and uh, memory which uh, avoids uh, simple interpretations somehow it's like very easy uh, like to is that it's uh, a monument to totalitarian regime which uh, now this monument exists in democratic state and uh, that kind of problems are over but in fact uh, lots of them are not over and uh, the fact that uh, this work is about uh, police torturers which happen uh, now which happen now in post-soviet countries uh, and it's not only not only ukrainian uh, problem uh, and um, so uh, these issues, uh, which uh, this like, museum uh, touches, they uh, still develop. They are still in uh, in continuation. So somehow it's not a museum of uh, the past, but it's a place where like current issues, uh, things about uh, like uh, state violence. Uh, uh, oppression of uh, people uh, like abusing her, like ignoring the basic human rights. These things can be reflected here. So I think it can be not only museum of the past, but a place uh, for discussion about the present. So uh, thank you very much, Nikita. I hope uh, that your idea will actually come into being uh, after we, um, yeah, do our own reflection. And uh, so thank you. Šobrīd mēs atrodamies 12. istabā, kur Ukrainas mākslinieks Nikita um, pastāsta par savu izstādi procedūru kabinets. Šeit redzam pie sienām piekarināt suvenīru šķīvi, kur kalpo savā veidā kā plakāti, atklājo dažādas spīdzināšanas zainas no Ukrainas policijas uh, ikdienas darba. Tā ir savā ziņā zināma, visiem zināma problēma Ukrainā, bet tā netiek apspriesta atklāti. Cilvēki par to zina, bet sistēma to atbalsta, un tikai cilvēki tiesību institūcijas, kas zina,
pacienti par šīs problēmas esamību. Um, ir pagādājuši nekī to informāciju, kas kalpo kā impuls radīt šos zīmējumus. Līdzīgi klāp medicīniskajās enciklopēdijās mēs redzam šos uzskatas materiāls, kur cilvēki zīmējumos tiek parādīti un viņiem tiek veiktas kādas sāpīgas procedūras. Viņu sejās ir šis sāļais smaids, it kā sāpīgi un neveikli veidotais, kas apliecina to, ka šobrīd viņiem ir sāpīgi, ka šobrīd viņiem darītais nepatīk, bet viņi zina, ka tas kalpos par labāku nākotu un tas būs viņu pašu labā. Šī sajūta ļoti precīzi attaiņo arī to, kā Ukraiņa mūsdienās redz šo problēmu saistībā ar spīdzināšanas metodiem. Varētu teikt, tā ir Ukraiņa mentalitāte, kas savā veidā atbalsojās tajā, ka bailes ir visvaranākais no visiem kontrolas mehānismiem. Ļoti nežēlīgi daudz cilvēki ir gājuši arī šo spīdzināšanu rezultātā bojā, bet par to ir ļoti maz informācijas sabiedriskajos mēdījos. Viss beidzot tika veidots arī vairākas protesta akcijas, kas stāstīja par šo savā veidā atklāto noslēpumu. Šī stādi ir apceļojis arī Ukraina un ir rādīta Ukrainā, bet tās uzdāmas jau nav informēt, jo informācija visiem ir zināma. Tās uzdāmas ir radīti iespaidu cilvēkos pārdomas un atbalsts, lai cilvēki vēlas par to pārdomāt arī vairāk. Ja runā par šī stūra mājas nākotni, tad mākslinieks, kurš tikko ir ierdies Latvijā vēlas, lai šī māja, protams, saglabātu sevī šīs atmiņas, bet tā nekādā ziņā nevajadzētu būt kā piemeneklim režīmam, jo savā ziņā jau šis režīms turpinās vēl arī mūsdienās. Nekas nav beidzies, ne Ukrainā, ne domājams arī daudz vietu citur Eiropā. Tas vēl aizvien ir proces, kas turpinās, tas nav vēsturis muzejs, bet vieta, kur ar mūsdienu mākslas un mūsdienu metožu palīdzību var atklāt šīs problēmas, ar ko mēs sastopamies ikdienā un par ko esam gatavi diskutēt.